Welcome to JavaFX Mashups. My name is Martin and this is my good friend Per. And today we're going to talk a bit about how to integrate web content like HTML and JavaScript into your JavaFX applications and use it as part of the user interface. And we'll be doing this by using the web view that was introduced in JavaFX 2. We have a lot of examples and demos to show you, and the plan is to both show how the web view works and give you some ideas of what it could actually be used for. Because in this case, the possibilities really are endless. Uh, well, my possibilities are endless. Your demos are pretty brainless. Wait a minute, mister. Now you've been picking at me all week, saying that my demos are just boring and ugly and now brainless as well. Yeah. But you know what? At least my demos work. I mean, your demos are just full of compiler errors and a lot of triple nested for loops. So you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, um, we had this conversation or discussion on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you remember this, uh, oh. especially this part down here. Does it ring any bells? Where you promised live fireworks heavy metal and free beer. Uh, I could sure go for a free beer right now. I don't know about you, but that would be great. You know what? About the free beer, I, I might have been a bit intoxicated by JavaFX fumes at the moment. So uh, no free beer. No free beer. No free beer. But I did try to bring fireworks with me from Sweden. So what, what do you mean tried? Where are the fireworks? Do you know what happens if you, you know, well, let's just say that Homeland Security doesn't appreciate it when they find a lot of fireworks in your luggage. So, I mean, you should be happy that I'm, e that I'm even standing here, you know, presenting with you, because I could be in a totally different place. Yeah. So, I'm, no firework. I'm really happy. Okay, no, no fireworks, no free beer, and I guess no heavy metal either. No, forget about the heavy metal and the free beer. What's important is that my demos are way cooler than yours. That's it. And if, yeah, sure. And I know you're having a hard time understanding, but why don't you just ask the audience? I mean, they know. They're civilized. Okay, that seems a bit pointless, but um, how many of you think that his demos will be the coolest? One guy. Oh, free candy. Anyone else? Oh, come on. <laughs> you're bribing the audience? Ah. Uh, that, I mean, that's just cheating. Well, didn't that, have free beer, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but doesn't that just prove that your demo are useless? You have to resolve to bribing people? Bribing? It's not bribing. I'm trying to be a nice guy. Oh, right. Well, enough of this nonsense now. Let's see your first demo. Let's see what you've got. Sure. I'll be glad to show my first demo. So, the web view is obviously capable of showing web content. So, that seems like a good, good thing to start with loading a web page. So this is a simple JavaFX application with a single web view node. And this is what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> so for your first demo at Java One in San Francisco, you, you're showing My Little Pony. Yeah. I'm trying to be a nice guy. Oh, you don't know about it. I've seen all the posters in your apartment. I know it's your favorite page. <clears throat> it's anyway, for you, man. Anyway, let's move on. OK, <laughs> so this is a, just a, a simple a page loaded in a web view. And before we look at the code, let's just take a quick look at architecture. So the web view component contains of two important classes, a web view and a web engine. And the web view is just a normal JavaFX node that you can insert into your node. We need to use scene. And the web view is responsible for presenting content that is generated by the web engine. The web engine class is responsible for getting the document or the, the pages from internet and applying CSS, generating the, the DOM, and generating the, the content that is forwarded to, forwarded to the web engine for presentation. So it's, it's a simple architecture. Let's look at the code. So I have created a very simple application. And in the start method, I create a web view. And I invoke web view and get engine.load. And that's how we load a web page. So we use the web engine to load a page. I mean, it's super simple. Now, sometimes you don't want to load an external page. I mean, sometimes you want to 
load a page that is stored in your application. And if you want to do that, you can just provide the load method with a path to your local file that's bundled with your application. And sometimes we want to show just a little piece of HTML, you know, some HTML that might be hard-coded into a string in our application. And if that is the case, then we can just create a page content string and we, we can replace the load with load content and just display some, you know, whatever we want to do. And in this case, it might look something like this. <laughs> so, the, the web view is extremely powerful and it's backed by WebKit, an open source project that is used by many of the major browser uh, vendors. And the web view supports CSS, media, JavaScript, you know, Canvas, everything that you come to expect when working with modern web technology. So, loading a page. Nice. Okay, well, I guess loading a page is pretty basic, but it's also pretty boring, you know, not much going on. So, I'm going to make things a bit more interesting by showing how you can integrate the web view into your application and kind of communicate to the user what's going on. So, we'll talk a bit about integration. And there are a number of ways of doing this, but I'm going to focus on three of them. Visualizing page load progress, handling alerts, and opening new windows from JavaScript. And I know you think it's enough to just show a screenshot of something and be done with it, but I prefer to show real live, you know, a, a, something real that's actually working. So if you please. Um, so I've created an, an example program with these three different um, techniques in. There we go. So this white area here is a web view that doesn't have any content yet. And up here, I've also added a progress bar, which is another standard JavaFX component. And if we load a page in this um, web view, you'll see that the progress bar fills up just yet like you would expect it to. And having, import, uh, having feedback like this is very important because on a slow connection, it might take several seconds before anything appears in the web view and the user won't really have any way of telling what's going on. So progress bars are a big, good, good, good thing. So the second example is an alert. And alerts are those annoying JavaScript dialog boxes that you see on web pages sometimes. This is a very simple web page with a single button to just display an alert. And if I loaded this in an unmodified web view, nothing would actually happen when I clicked this button because the web view doesn't really care about alerts um, by default. It's very easy to create your own though. You can get a call back and display it any way you want. So here I've created a simple pane that just slides down from the top with the alert message from JavaScript. But how you visualize this is, well, that's of course entirely up to you. All right, and moving on to pop-ups. Very similar page. In JavaScript, there's a method called window.open that takes a URL and opens it in a new window. The default behavior in the web view is a bit different though. Um, instead of opening a new window, the URL is loaded in the current web view. But if you want to, you can override this too and have it open elsewhere or disallow it completely. And I've chosen to create a pretty tr um, traditional pop-up window. So when I click this button, oh, it appears here. That's interesting. Well, let's do this. Like that, uh, an amazing page, I know. Um, and, but you can choose to do whatever you want with, with this URL. So let's go back and have a look at some code. All right. So for the progress demo, we need a web view and a progress bar, right? Then we'll get an object called a load worker from the web engine of the web view. And just like the name suggests, the load worker is responsible for loading content into the web view. So somehow we want the progress of the load worker to be reflected on the progress bar. And we do this by using a very neat JavaFX feature called bindings. 
So we can get the progress property from the progress bar and use the bind method to, well, to bind that to the progress property of the load worker. So every time the progress changes, the progress bar will be updated automatically. And I, I, gotta say, I gotta say, I really like this. Working with bindings this way is great when you're writing user interfaces. You don't have to write very much code and the code you do write is, you know, it's very clean and easy to read. So I like it a lot. And showing alerts. Well, that's as easy as, um, well, registering an event handler really. So every time the JavaScript alert method or function is called, we'll get a callback to our method here and we'll get an event and the, the date of that event is the alert message. So we can display it any way we want. Opening new windows takes a bit more work. When you open a new window in JavaScript, you can request that it has certain features, like whether it should have a menu bar or whether it should be resizable or not. And we get a pop-up features object as input to this callback, uh, to this event handler with those feature requests um, inside that object. And our job here is to return a web view or rather a web engine where this URL should be loaded. So as you remember, I created a very simple pop-up window. So I create a new stage with a simple web view and return the web engine of that web view. So this tells the framework that this is where I want to load this URL. And it can be in a, in a new window or well, in a completely different part of your application if you want to. And if you return null, the URL won't be loaded at all. So you can prevent new windows from opening altogether. All right, so that's a bit nicer, don't you think? Whoa, man, you're really pushing the limits. I mean, alerts and progress at the same time, that's, that's outrageous. Yeah. So adding event handlers to take care of alerts is, well, it's necessary, but it's not enough if you wanna create a seamless user experience. What's missing is communication. So in this section, I will show you how to issue JavaScript commands from Java or JavaFX and into the JavaScript engine. And let's take a look at the code. We create a simple web view and we get the engine and we load a page. So far, so good. The next step is to wait for the engine to finish loading the page. If we don't, we send command to the engine and they will just fail. So we add a change listener to the load worker state property. And every time something happens in the loading progress, our changed method will get invoked. And when the page is fully loaded, the state will be equal to succeeded. And we know that the page is done. And that's when we can start sending commands. And well, this is what it looks like. This is an example. So I invoke engine and execute script, and I can pass in any valid JavaScript into the web engine. So anything you can write between the script tag in HTML, you can pass to the execute script parameter, execute script method. So in this case, I just change the background of the body. And if we, if we continue from our previous example, it might look something like this, red background. So changing the background is one thing, but there's more things you can do. So you can just, in this case, we just ask for the HTML source code and the web engine doesn't contain any method for getting the source code. So th this is the only way of doing that. Or we can scroll the page to a specific point. Or we can just execute any existing JavaScript function. So any valid JavaScript is okay. Communication. Yes, communication is important, but um, that's not very elegant, is it? I mean, you're passing strings with JavaScript and just, you know, you throw them, throw them at the web view and see what happens. Nah, I don't think that's very nice. I'm going to talk a bit about how to communicate from JavaScript to JavaFX. And this requires, a, well, a slightly more civilized solution. So let's have a look at the different contexts that we're working with here. We have our 
Java code, of course, running in our Java application. And then we have the JavaScript code running inside the web view. And Per just showed us how to communicate this way by passing these strings with JavaScript into the web view. But how about the other way around? I mean, there's no way we'll have a script with Java code and have that execute, uh, a string with Java code and have that executed in Java. That, that's, that would be crazy. But what we can do is to create an object here in the Java context and kind of pass a mirror image of that into JavaScript. So this JavaScript object will have the same methods as the Java object. They will be called the same thing. And by invoking them, we can have the corresponding Java code being executed in our Java context. JavaScript can pass variables as arguments to these methods, and Java can return data back to JavaScript. So this is a very elegant and nice solution, I think. And I've created a really, really cool demo to show this off. Are you ready for this? Demo time. See if I can just uh, move this, perhaps. Great. All right, this is my extremely cool demo. It's got a single web view, this white square here, and everything else is just plain JavaFX. And what I've done here is I've created three links, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. And using these awesome um, powers of integration with Java, I can actually click these links and have the color of the program change entirely. Oh, this is just, wow. It's amazing, don't you think? No? Yeah. All right, if that's not enough, I've created one more link, and this is a dangerous one down here. This link does something that no JavaScript would be able to do without talking to Java, and that's to close the application entirely. So by clicking here, I can just shut the application down, and that's pretty cool if you ask me. Right? All right, let's have a look at the code. You're never happy. All right, let's start in Java land. And here we create a new class with a single method called exit that will close our application. So we have an exit method that closes the program. Then we create a web view and get its web engine just like we always do. And then we'll actually use something that you've shown us, uh, the execute script method. But in this case, we'll, we won't use it to run some JavaScript, but to actually get something from the web view. So we ex execute possibly the shortest script you've ever seen. It's just window. And by doing this, we get a reference to the window object from the web view. And the win window object is the topmost um, object in the JavaScript hierarchy. This is where all the global JavaScript variables live. And this gets returned to us as a JS object, which is a class representing any JavaScript object. And it has a generic setter called setMember that we'll use. So we create a new instance of our integration class, and we choose a suitable name for it, and use this setMember um, method to, to set this variable in the window object. Right. So the set member, that's where you inject the Java, the Java object into yes, JavaScript? Yes, exactly. Okay. When we do this, the uh, Java object or kind of a mirror image of it will be available in JavaScript. And since we're using the window object, our um, integration object will be available to all JavaScript in the page. So anywhere in the page, we can just run Java integration, which is the name we chose, dot exit to close the application. So in this case, it's a link, but it could have been in a function or wherever you wanted. So I don't know, that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, sure. You go from one bad demo to the next. But you know what? I have a real world example that we can solve using your technique. Mm -hmm. And what's that? Do you know what this is? Ooh. Um, it looks like um, perhaps some code to, oh to calculate how much free beer for the entire audience would cost, right? Very funny, no it's not. It is JavaScript, and if you run it inside a browser, you will get this image, and it's a fractal. Now, what's interesting about it is the rendering times. 
So for Chrome, it's 1.6 seconds, and for Safari, it's 1.8 seconds. And for the web view, it's close to four seconds. Now, this is not a, you know, this is not a nice user experience. I mean, waiting for, even for Chrome, one and a half seconds, it's too much. The solution is to do the task in the context where it's, you know, best suited. And in this case, calculating a fractal is much quicker in Java. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass the parameters from HTML JavaScript into Java, JavaFX, and do the fractal calculations, calculations in there and then just return you know, a byte away or a path to, to the image. And if we do this, we can reduce the, the time to 800 milliseconds for the entire rendering process. And that's pretty good. So I should probably mention that we have a very high iteration count when we calculate the fractal. So it's, it's unnecessarily high, but I just want to make a point that heavy lifting should be done in, you know, in another context in, in this case. So, um, well, it's not every day that you do a fractal. It isn't? No, not for me. But think about it. Image manipulation, face recognition, it takes a lot of time. So if you can pass the, the arguments of the entire algorithm to Java. It's a much quicker thing to do. All right. Well, that script seemed pretty complex to me. That's, that's a lot of strange for loops in for loops in for Triples, loops. Nasty yeah. For loops. I'm sorry about that. And as our scripts are becoming more and more complex, um, well, sooner or later, bugs are going to show up in them. I mean, especially with your poor JavaScript skills, at least. So I think it's time we talk a bit about debugging. Most modern browsers have really good debugging tools built into them these days, and that can be great. But when we're communicating with Java this way, I mean, there's really no way to test that in a browser. They don't know about our Java context. So we have to figure out some way to debug the scripts running within the web view, right? And <coughs> Sometimes all you need are a few quick printouts to get an idea of what the script is doing. And there aren't really any dedicated methods of doing this in the web view, but we've already shown you a way of doing it by well, being a bit creative. And we could use the alert callback, for example. So by registering an event handler for the onAlert method and just printing any message we get, all alert calls in JavaScript, well, essentially becomes uh, system out print lines. So it's a bit of a hack, but uh, if all you need are a few quick printouts, this is probably the easiest way of getting them. But I know you don't like this. No. no it's not a very nice solution. But it's a hack. It is a hack, but luckily you can do this, which is much, much nicer. Better. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not my code. It looks like something you might have written on a bad day, I know, but... Or a good day. Or a good day, yes. But, um, I mean, this actually works. This does something. Um, and that's no, not always the case with the stuff you produce. Um, but what this strange script does is that it loads a tool called Firebug Lite into the web view. And Firebug is a debugging tool for Firefox. And this Lite version is implemented entirely in JavaScript. So it can be run in many different environments. This, of course, isn't something I came up with on my own. It's uh, kind of the standard version of loading Firebug uh, Lite, and you can easily find this script online. So let's have a look at what it can do. I've created, um, I've created a simple browser for this example, a very simple one. All it does is debug stuff, really. So I know of a good page we can use for our debugging purposes. Sorry? We can try, yes. Right, like I said, feedback is very important. Um, this is where I rent all my cars right? when I'm traveling. It's, it's a very user-friendly and... Uh, That's the crappiest page I've ever seen in my entire life. No, it's good. I mean, you're good. totally disrespectful to the audience. I mean, no. It's not a chance. It's fun. Forget about it. Nope, not going to happen. No. I mean, look at it. <laughs> you know what will happen? You will break Firebug if you try to debug that page. I'm so sorry. But they look. have really good rates. Doesn't matter. So let's try this instead.
much okay. better. Okay. I have no idea where you come up with this stuff, but all right. The, you don't like onions, do you? I do, but we can talk more about that later. Um, but I agree, this page is a better example to, to show off uh, the powers of Firebug Lite. So we'll click the debug button up here. And there it is, just like that. Uh, we fetched it from, from the web, nothing cached. Uh, so it's pretty fast. And Firebug Lite appends itself as a panel to the bottom of the web view. And you can resize it. And there's really no way of telling this is just JavaScript. I think it's, they've done a really good job. So the first tab we get here is a console. This is where all, well, any warnings and error messages from JavaScript will be printed. So that's pretty useful in itself. And we can also execute scripts of, of, our, of, uh, of our own here, like checking the title, for example. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who doesn't like onions is an idiot. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we also have an HTML tab where we can kind of drill down into the DOM of the page, or we can use the inspect function to select an element to have a closer look at. So we see the code for the element out here, and we see the style here to the right. And we can actually edit this like that right away and try out new changes to, to our code and layout and stuff like that. And there's a dedicated CSS tab, and we have a script tab with all the script for the page and so on. So it's, it's a really nice tool, and it's great that you can load it just like this without actually writing much code at all. So yeah, a good debugging tool. There we are. Thank you. Finally, you showed us something useful. Yeah, but you know, a good debug tool can be like, it can be like a bridge over troubled code, I guess. Nah. Speaking of bridges. Ooh, that's a pretty ugly bridge. That's one ugly bridge, I know. And that's what the next section is going to be about. About an ugly bridge? What are you going to do about it? Like write a new one or? Well, kind of, but I'm going to enhance the looks of this bridge. And one way to do that is to just execute a lot of JavaScript commands. And we can manipulate the DOM in whatever way we like. But the JavaScript commands are very generic. You can do, you know, you can do anything with it. But if you only need to change the DOM, you know, manipulating the background and stuff like that, there is a much better way of doing it. So let's take a look at the source code for this page. It's a body and it's a div containing some text and an image. And we have two IDs, header and image. And there's a source attribute as well on the image. I mean, it's pretty simple. And the DOM looks something like this, a body with a div and an image. Now, what's important to understand is that for every div, for every tag in HTML, a corresponding JavaFX class exists. So we have, in JavaFX, HTML image element, and we have an HTML div element and an HTML body element. So instead of doing a lot of JavaScript execution, we can just get the elements and manipulate them to update the page. So let's take a look at the code. We ask the engine for the HTML document. And the next step is to ask the document for a specific tag with the name body. So now we have a reference to the body in the HTML. And then we just change the style of the body. In this case, we change the background. The next step is to get an element with ID equal to header. And that's the div tag, remember? And we change the text content and we change the style attribute to make it look a little bit better. And the next step is to just ask for the image. And we change the source of the image and the style. And this is the result. It's much better. It's a much better looking bridge, I know. But you know, um, all these changes you made, they're just refre reflected immediately to the page. Yeah. You, you don't have to reload anything or... No updates, no commits, no nothing. Mm. Just change the object and the page will be updated. Nice. So changing object is one thing, but you can also insert new nodes into the DOM by invoking insert before on the body, where you can append the child last in the DOM 
or you can just remove one if you like. So it's it's powerful. It is pretty powerful, yeah. But I think it's time to, that we stopped showing, you know, ima Im imaginary examples and uh, perhaps moved on to something that could actually be useful, you know, maybe. <laughs> so for this example, I've written a really complicated program, a very complex GUI that's really hard to use. Well, I tried. It, take, it, it takes a lot of work, but I, I managed to pull together a small one. So we'll see what happens. All right. Here's my program. Maybe you can close the other one. Yes. Great. So as you can see, it's very complicated, and uh, none of it really makes any sense. We have a lot of strange things here, and you know, yeah, I don't know how it works. But the point about this is that I think many inexperienced computer users feel this way when they when they sit down in front of a new application for the first time. You have a lot of strange names for things and dials to turn and so on, and you don't really understand what to do. But luckily, this complicated program has a help function built into it. So we can choose help and show the manual. And that's the manual. Um, and it's a web view, of course, and it's showing a very simple HTML page. And that's hopefully useful enough. But um, why stop there? We've already shown how to communicate from JavaScript to Java and back again. So why not try to make the help function a bit more, well, a bit smarter? Down here we have um, a how-to section, how to do something in, in this application. And the first step is, in the main window, select the ding radio button. OK, doesn't make any sense, but we'll try to find it. Eww. You know, it could be anywhere. It could be in, a, in another window or in another tab and so on. But what we can do is just click this link and the button will glow and show itself to us. So we select the ding radio button and now the first step in our how to turn screen. And we know that this is done, we can move on to the next, which is move the thread slider to the desired value. And it's clearly down here and well, 27 is obviously a good value. Good enough for you. Yep. And finally, we click the Chorge button, whatever that is. And we're done. Well done. The guide is completed. And of course, this is a very simple example of something that I think could actually be really, really useful. We're running a full WebKit browser here, so we could easily embed audio, video, maybe some animations or small like certification tests or whatever into the documentation of the program. I've seen several cases where there is a wiki for an application. Well, why not integrate the wiki directly into the program? And you won't just get the content. You can also get all the editing function and everything you get in a normal browser as part of your application. So I think that's great. I think it could be a really useful thing in you know, all the applications out there. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for creating the crappiest help section in history. I mean, look at it. You don't even have the same font. I was, I was in a hurry. Yeah, I know. So um, this is obvious some HTML without any CSS. And that is just wrong, man. But maybe that's what the help section looks like. I mean, it's, it's a web page. What can nope. I do? Nope. That's not the right way to do it. So I'm going to just make this a little bit more beautiful. And it's a lot of work, but be patient. So I'm going to inject a CSS into the application and make his demo so beautiful. And as I said, it's a lot of work. This is it. That's my demo. So just invoke set user style sheet location with your style sheet. And that's how you do it. So when you load the page, the style sheet will be applied. So I have a demo. I can show you what it's like. And it's not just a screenshot? Are no. You sure? This is my first real demo. And I copied your code, so. Yeah. Good job. Okay, so I've changed the font. 
it's a bit embarrassing, but you get the point. And well, I've, I removed the underline from the link. I don't like that. So two lines of code. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, you reused my demo and showed two lines of code. Uh, Free candy. <laughs> Free candy is your answer to anything, isn't it? It was a good it? demo. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think I can beat this, actually. Um, and I'm not even sure I need to go back to the slides for this. Nah, I'm just going to start it right away. This is a demo that, well, it doesn't really introduce any new concepts, but it's kind of a clever way of using the web view. All right. This might look a bit strange, you know, with the different colors and the different fonts and things don't really um, seem to fit well together. But these are actually different parts of separate web pages running uh, in my application. So up here I can see what the weather is like. I'm apparently in San Jose, not sure why, but that's fine. Uh, the weather seems to be nice in the great outdoors. Uh, and down here, I have um, a widget where I can see when the next bus leaves from the bus stop down the street. So if everything goes wrong here, this is my exit strategy. You will have to leave alone because I got candy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to throw farther. I know. Um, all right. So two widgets. That's not very impressive. Let's add a third one. Three widgets are really impressive. This is, this is in Swedish, so bear with me. But this is a page over here where I upload all my exercises. When I go running, I upload the GPS file to this page and it keeps track of what, what I'm doing. And I can move my mouse around here and highlight different elements. And when I find something I like, I can just click it and it immediately appears as a widget on my, well, in my program here. So I can move this around, arrange things any way I like. And I think it's a pretty clever thing to do. It's just like a dashboard, you know, in the reception where you yeah. put all the useful information. Dashboard, that's a good name for yeah, it as well, so. yeah. Uh, but th this could be actually useful. You could show, well, like the bus times and perhaps the company stock chart and yeah. so on. Um, yeah. Really cool, I like it. All right, so, so what's next? We've been you know, we've been fighting each other, you know, trying to write the best demo. And I think it's, it's gotten out of hand. So I'm, I'm going to go back to basic and just do something simple again. So you can just, you, you can say that you beat me. I'm just going to show a web page. That's it. Oh, so My Little Pony again? No, this is javamostwanted.com. Oh. Yeah. So let me show you. I have a demo. And this is it. This is Java Most Wanted, and it contains the 10 most dangerous and ill-behaved JavaFX persons in the world. So oh. if you see one of them, run for your life, but don't leave a session. <laughs> <laughs> you mean these guys are walking in the streets right now? Yeah. Oh, it's kind of scary, you know? Jasper the Ripper. Ooh. I know. And Jim Weaver. Oh no. Yeah. The Birdman. Ooh, scary. Yeah. I know. Okay. And Stephen Bundy Chin, you know, they're scary people. Yes. But let me ask you this Java Bureau of Investigation? Is yeah. Is that even a real thing? Super serious. Yes. It exists. JavaMostWanted.com. And did you happen to create some of this stuff? Well, it might have been me. Yeah. I wrote the page, yeah. Yes, because I think you made a mistake. No, I don't do mistakes. Um, I don't think Indiana Jones should be on that list. Why not? No, you know, he's not on the JavaFX team. But he is. Uh, no, and he's he... a core committer. I mean, he's, he's like JavaFX. He's uh, the king. Yeah, but, but it's a secret. It is? Yes, it's not official. Okay, my bad. So I guess we have to change the page. Yes, you have to remove Indiana Jones before Larry Ellison sees it. Okay, and you know what? This isn't an ordinary web browser. This is something very special. So when I move the mouse over, it's, it's just like a web browser. But as soon as I click the command key, I start to highlight the different elements that's under the mouse. And when I click the mouse, 
I will just display the editing bar. So you said Indiana Jones. And that's it. And what you see is all the attributes that are available for the image tag in HTML. And I can just change I can just change the source attributes. So who do you think should be there? James Gosling, perhaps? I think that's better. Okay. Let's write Gosling. I know there's an image, gosling.jpg. So um, Gosling, and that's it. That's pretty neat, right? Whoa. You didn't expect that, did you? That's not James Gosling. No. That's a really good image of me. Hmm. And Martin, machine gun. Right. Now I'm satisfied, much better. Okay, thank you. I did not see that coming, no. Um, but uh, I like this, but uh, you know, it's a lot of work and it's pretty much a waste of time, don't you think? Why? Because the next time you load this page, all your changes will be gone. Well, actually, no, because I've added some code that, you know, as soon as a change happens in this application, it's uploaded to the web, so it's live. Oh. <laughs> You're live and kicking. Yeah, okay. Which is kind of bad, but... Yeah, so, okay, uh, thank you. So, javamostwanted.com for the ill-behaved. All right, I'm just going to close this. There. And I have another demo, and I think I can actually beat this. This was pretty cool, but I think I can do better. Um, and once we're done here, I'm pretty sure we will go out and, you know, have a beer and celebrate our great work, or, you know, drink to forget and drown our sorrows. It in, will be beer anyways. So. We'll have beer, yeah. yes. And cool. I have the perfect application for planning our big night out. All right. And this is it. I'm still pretty disappointed you didn't bring in a free beer. So we're going to start off by having a beer and it's going to be on you. So I'll click the I need beer button. And immediately all the pubs and bars in the area show up on this map here. And you know, creating a map service is pretty hard. I've heard people fail at creating maps. Um, well, you know, everybody doesn't really go all the way. I know. I've and heard about it. Instead of writing a map service of our own, which is very hard, we're using Google Maps, which actually works. So we'll start by having a beer. And I know this is a great place. So I want to go there. Right, we get. Okay, this is how much a taxi ride there will cost us. And 10 bucks, well, you're paying, so I don't mind. Um, all right, and we've had beer, plenty of beer. Now I think it's time that we have something to eat. So we'll check out the restaurants and well, go there, perhaps. 11 bucks, sure, I'm hungry. And uh, well, I think that's about it. Beer, food. But we've had beer, I wanna dance. Okay, go ahead. No. Very funny. So I can dance because I've been drinking beer. So let's go down there. Well, I'm, I'm already broke, so it doesn't matter. All right. But now I'm done. It. This is enough. I've had enough. And whoa, we get the route for our entire night out and also the tab, everything you bought. This is great. I mean, perfect. You bought unknown liquor for 85 bucks. I mean, why? Uh, I don't remember. So you bought it. Uh, all right, so this is probably the coolest demo we'll ever see. I mean, there's no point of going on. We, can, we should just go home. Well, I have last, one last demo. And I've been thinking about this for a very long time. And I was having a really hard time coming up with what to do. I mean, we've covered most of the things we want to show you. So after two weeks, it hit me. You know the abstract that we send to conferences to get accepted? The abstract, yeah, what about it? Apparently it's supposed to say what we're going to talk about. I mean, it's stupid. But that's just a list of buzzwords and you know... I know, I know. <sighs> so? Who, who reads it anyway? No one. <laughs> no, people read it. I mean, apparently they're here, so we have to, you know, it's they're, strange. They're here for the free beer. I know, <laughs> but anyways, I figured out a way to come up with the next demo.
So what we have to do is read the abstract and do what it says. I mean, it's super simple. And we should have thought of that years ago. I mean, we should have saved so much time. Okay, but this is a, this is a bunch of text. Yeah, so we've shown most of the abstract, but this is what's left. Blurring the line between web and application. That's, right. that's my demo. Well, it's easy to draw lines in JavaFX and there is a blur uh, effect, you know. No, it's, that's it's, not it. No? So I've created the demo that really blurs the, the line between web and application. And I think I've done such a good job that no one in the audience will find the web view. Hmm. And, you know, I'm ready for some serious betting. So if you find the web view, you will get candy. <laughs> candy. All right. So let's take a look at it. This better be good. Let's close. I don't know where we're at. Okay. And this is the last demo. So where is the web view? Any bets? Free candy. No one. There's not that many things to choose from. <laughs> oh. The bar at the bottom. Hmm. That's JavaFX. It's not the web view. It's right and wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. You're absolutely right and wrong, so it's not the ball. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Any other bets? No, JavaFX. Okay, so it's difficult. And I'm going to show you what part is the web view. So you see the checkbox, show web view. When I click the checkbox, the web view will be colored red. Are you ready? So we have eight web views. <laughs> and eight JavaFX components. And we are doing some heavy communication to calculate the ball, where it is, and what part of the ball to, to paint. Or maybe, knowing you, maybe you're just moving an image above all of this, and it, that saved you like many days of work. You Anna. never trust me, do you? Nope. And I knew, and I knew you were going to say that, so I added the special ball. Oh, the special ball. Yeah, so I'm going to... Decrease the speed, and when I press the special ball, the ball will be painted in a very different way in the web view. So I'm just going <laughs> to wait for the ball and press the special ball. And there you go. Oh. I can guarantee you that I'm not cheating. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I'm slightly impressed. I'll give you that. Like 1%. Yes, 1% impressed. I know. All right. Well, that is pretty cool. I know. So, <laughs> writing a Pong game might not be, you know, something you do every day. I mean, I, your boss not going to pay for this, I promise you. <laughs> but if you combine all the demos we've shown you, like Pong, the map, JBI, and all the different techniques that we've learned today, we hope that you've come to realize that the web view is really, really powerful. And the sky, the sky is the limit. Even for you. Even for me, yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit clouded. <laughs> it is, yes. But uh, I think that's it. We have a few minutes for questions, if you want. If Anybody? you want to play Pong? If you want to play Pong, yeah, it plays itself. We have candy. <laughs> um, so... Unless there are any questions, um, we'd like to thank you and feel free to come up and, have, and talk to us up here. And well, thank you.